Hey guys, this is Julian. Welcome, my fellow kids, to another Fix Your Project stream, the show where I fix the projects of the community's submissions. Today we have a few projects for you today to check out. I'm excited to show you and I'm excited to get to work on these to fix them. If you want to submit your project files, go over to patreon.com slash Julian Gray and you can submit your project files there. We are also hosting a little meetup and feedback community stream following this, this uh, YouTube live stream over on Discord. If you go to discord.gg slash Julian Gray, we're going to have a little get together over there following this live stream at 2 p.m. Pacific. It's currently 12. And this week we're going to have a little bit of a feedback stream so or a feedback call so you guys can submit your project files and everybody from the community can mutually give their feedback to the song. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um but that is for later time. That is going to happen at 2 p.m. Pacific over on Discord. Currently, we are on YouTube and we will be fixing your project files. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. You can click on that button right below and um, submit your project file over on Patreon. I might be able to get it in today. If not, we'll get to it next month stream. All right. So to start things off, we have a few projects uh, for today's stream. I think it's only, I don't know, two or three today. Uh, we have a relatively low amount of projects submitted this week. I think it's just, you know, summer weekends are always busy, so um, I can only anticipate that. But we are going to fix the ones we got submitted nonetheless. We have three submissions today. Here they are. Better, Full Gas, and Sunrise in Nashville. Full Gas is by Wick Wire. Uh, Sunrise in Nashville, I can't remember who it is, nor can I remember who submitted better. One of these is from Infinikid, and I'm assuming they're in the chat. If you guys are in the chat, let me know with a little comment so I know you're there. Is anybody out there? <laughs> I think you are. I can see that there's viewership. This will be a lot of fun. I've been considering writing music on YouTube Live or Twitter Live or Twitch Live or whatever um, in the next month or so. Let me know if you're interested in that and we'll try to make that happen. I've been writing a lot of music lately and um, yeah, might as well broadcast it. All right. So we have two project files here ready to go. I'm going to just let's go ahead and open the ALP first just because it's easier. Um, let's go ahead and throw this into my fixer project folder and let that expand. This is Wickwire full gas. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and take a look at this one first, just because it's the Ableton project format and it was submitted as such. So to unzip it, it's going to take a second. All right, we're getting there. Getting there, getting there, getting there. Taking a second, but it should be good to go. In the meantime, how are you guys doing? I'd love to hear about what's been going on in your life and how you've been. So we've got the project file now. Let me go ahead and try to open it. Which one should we do first? I guess I'll do full gas because I said I would. Uh, we're going to open this in live 10. If that doesn't work, we'll go to live 11. I always do this every time so that we don't forcefully upgrade project files that don't need to be. I'd, I would hate for that to ruin somebody's project or ruin their time, I guess. All right. Okay, so it was a 10 project. It was a good thing I opened in 10 first. And uh, yeah, we should we should be good to go to just play this now. I think I've resolved all the issues that we've always had on these streams. I think that the... The audio problem is now fixed, and we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and play this. This is Wickwire Full Gas. Thank you. 
Sounds like there's a note in that vocal that is like not the right interval. We'll get to that in a minute, but but um, that immediately stood out to me. Wickwire, welcome. We're checking out your song. so far some cool ideas okay still have the same qualm with the vocal there's a note in there that's not in the key but we may be able to address that let's try to focus on the progression though and the production Sounding good so far. Nice, nice. Yeah, vocals still We'll figure that out in a second, but it's not in the right key. As we're listening, I'm going to pull up... Uh, well, first I'm going to disable this. Let's go ahead and pull up span. So, what I'm looking for... Yeah. I see that you bought Sonar Works. Uh, it's so good. It's unbelievably good. But um, I don't want to compromise the sound of the the track with keeping it on. If you guys aren't familiar, those of you who are uninitiated, uh, Sonar Works, this platform here, um, basically you take a microphone around your room and it finds all of the room resonances and all of the inconsistencies in your monitors. Um, and then it corrects it in software. So you end up with the flattest possible signal for both your room and your monitors. Also works on headphones. Um, but in so saying, uh, keeping this on, I, I, unfortunately, I mean, I don't have his calibration anyway, but um, keeping it on would mean that I'm applying his room's EQ to the mix. So it's going to skew our, our balance. Okay, so um, we're going to turn that off and just not use it. Um, but yeah, what I was saying with span was I want to, one of the, the main things I'm noticing is a, a little bit of an uh, imbalance, especially in the low mid. Um, and span allows us to really visualize that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to disable the drums. Now what disabling the drums allows us to do is really look at the sonics. For the time being, I'm just going to group all of these. Just turn it off. And we'll do that for this. I think this is also a drum. We'll throw that in here. Sorry to um, fiddle around with your project, but I'm just going to disable the drums for a minute. 
Um, and what that's going to allow us to do is actually visualize the sonic balance without the percussion in there. Uh, because the percussion can sometimes skew the low end to make it seem like there's more low end than there actually is in the song because the kick is taking up such a large space on the spectrum. And then if the, if the release time on the actual visualizer is slow enough, um, sometimes it looks like there's this huge amount of low end when it's really just a transient of a kick. Um, and we don't want that. So let me, let me go ahead and go ahead and play this. And then what we'll do is we're going to look at the low end balance. Well, we're going to look at the overarching balance just without the kick. So as you can see here, we have a note here playing at C2. That's our two octave. Our next note is up here at C4. You don't have much in the way of C2. Or I'm sorry, C3. So this whole octave from C3 to C4 is looking pretty empty. I would say lower C3 or lower three octave. Um, and then you have a nice fullness here. You have a little bit of a build up here at the four harmonic. And then you have a lot of roll off off the top here, which I think is a stylistic choice. So we won't even mind that. What I'm gonna do is just see if we can eliminate this gap here at the three octave. And what we can do is we can just pull up the bass sound and take a look that way. So let me do this. Hey, Mark is in the, the house here. Marco is an old friend of mine, love that guy. Hope you're doing well, man. I was just thinking of you this morning. So yeah, um, we're gonna take a look at the the bass sound. You can see that there's a huge harmonic uh, right here and then it kind of tapers off. What we can actually do is we can look at that bass sound. I'm gonna go ahead and unfreeze that because I have serum. And let's see if we can find out why it's doing that. So you have all of these instruments at the zero octave. They're all in the same place. Um, I'm sorry, all these oscillators. Um, so you're getting a, a quite high buildup right at that one note. If you look at the span again, that's the culmination of two saw waves and a sine wave right on that note. And if I had to wager, I would say that that, that sine wave is actually what's making that really loud. If we muted this, yeah, it's going to be flatter because the sine wave is only a single harmonic and that's only the fundamental. So that might be skewing your your balance of your bass here to make it more subby than than full range. So I'm actually just going to mute that that sign that sign sub. I don't think you need it. If we do use it, I think you could just pull it down an octave. I I, I highly doubt that it's going to be very audible, but um, at least it keeps it away from the other stuff. Let's go ahead and pull up span again. See now you no longer have that build up right at that one note octave. Now you have a pretty uniform bass because that sine wave is not overlapping on the fundamental of the other bass. So it sounds really good and nice and full. So what we could also do is take an EQ onto this. Uh, let's go ahead and throw an EQ. And we can play into that that dip a little bit. So like give it a, a marginal boost like right around here at like 80 to 100, right in that three octave region. For some reason Ableton um, and span differ in the way they um, they label octaves. So the one is actually uh, the two, and then the three is actually the four, and so on in, in, with the Ableton stock EQ compared to the span. But um, you can you can just visually see where that that dip is. So I'm I'm just giving it a little bit of boost here, and if you see it now, we're compensating a little bit here at that 100, uh, or I'd say like. 80 to 200 range. That's what I'm trying to give it. So it's right around here. Looking good. Whoa, why is that scrolling? <laughs> That's weird. Okay. <laughs> it's just like my DAW became haunted. I know you guys saw that. That's uh, it's very strange. Um, so yeah, so that, that helps a lot in filling it out. Some more volume. Okay, and then let's go ahead and look at span again. 
And then let's play this into the context of the mix. So if you look at still just the the sustained sonics that aren't percussive, the bass is still quiet. So in this scenario, you can kind of see that even in this drop, the bass is quieter than everything else. So that, that gives us the indicator that we can probably give us a little bit more gain. Uh, we don't necessarily, uh, you know, we, we don't necessarily need to keep it as quiet as it is. I also think your sub is redundant. Um, you don't need that. It's kind of redundant with uh, the sine wave that you had in your main bass sound. So if you wanted to do a separate sub, I would say just split it off into its own channel and not use the, the sub oscillator in Serum. Um, something like that. And then let's give it that volume I was talking about. So we, I am missing a plug in here. It's the SSL channel strip, but I, I don't think it's doing that much. It could be adding that volume we're missing, but um, there's not much I can do about it. The closest thing I can do is like a, a glue compressor or something, but I'm just going to give it some gain. I don't think it needs much, uh, maybe like three or four decibels. Uh, Sonic Buster, this is Wickwire's track. Um, sounding pretty cool. Okay, so... You see how much fuller that sounds now that we've just given the bass its volume it needed to be at level with the rest of the track. It really does help. So next I want to identify what this big peak is here at, at 300 to 400. I think it's the vocal, if that's my guess. Yeah. Oh, I really nailed that. Okay, so that's right at the three or 400 region. It's way too loud. If I unsolo that, you can see that it's like plus six over everything else. Let me back it up. So what I would say is maybe we could just go ahead and uh, I'm going to group this so we have the ability to add an EQ. And then what I'm going to do is just pull down a little bit of 300 to 400 right in this zone here okay it takes a little bit of the body out of the vocal which I'm not super mad about I think it's kind of nice actually but I think that we can compensate for this gain reduction here with a little bit more of high end um, it'll make it a little bit crisper this is a subjective thing, but I think that really clear, tinny vocals are really nice. Okay, that resolves the mix issues with most of the sonics here. Let me mute the vocal and see if there's anything else compounding there. Could also be this. Unfreeze that. And let's do a similar thing on this guy so we can pull a little bit of that resonance back. So, okay, that more or less resolves my issues with the, the mix. Let's go ahead and throw the drums back in and see how they play. They might be really loud now in context, but I think we've, we've balanced out the sonics of the song. That bass is essential, so you, you really gotta make sure it's in balance.
Sure, I'll give the stream volume a little bit more boost. Give it like two or three decibels. See if this helps. Okay, so we've resolved the main balance issues. Some of the drums could be mixed better, I think. Like you can add a little bit of crunch to the snare. They're a little bit boxy. This is a really bad habit that I always discourage. Um, there's really like no reason why you should ever low pass a clap or any sort of percussion. The, the brightness and the clarity of your mix is going to be 10K to 20K. Um, if you're low passing at 10K, it's going to give your drums an inherent lo-fi feeling. Um, the signature sonic fingerprint of lo-fi music, I think, is like the digital degradation of audio. And that a, a lot of that is to do with like using MP3 files <laughs> um, because MP3 files, the way it compresses an MP3 file to get it such into a small format, or I should say the manifesto of why MP3 files were created was to make files as small as possible so you can squeeze a bunch of music onto consumer devices like an iPod or whatever. Um, but what it does is it actually chops off anything above 10K and anything below, I think it's like tw uh, 30 or maybe it's 20. Um, I'm not sure of the exact spec, but if you actually look at like a, a lower bitrate MB3 file, you will see that, or uh, I guess sample rate, you will see that uh, the actual file itself has a, a baked in low pass. And it's inherent to like this 90s, 2000 early internet audio, which we're nostalgic for. And that's what makes like lo-fi and lo-fi hip hop and lo-fi house music and that sort of stuff cool. But what happens when you actually apply a definitive like hard low pass filter on anything is that you end up with this adverse effect of making your sound sound lo-fi <laughs> it sounds like a baked mp3 file from like 2003 um so i actually i i recently did a purge of my sample folder and anything that was an mp3 file i actually just removed straight up because it's going to be so low fidelity without that 10k up that in contrast to elements with a lot of 10k or a lot of 20k with a a, a really bright sound and a really crisp mix, it's going to sound muffled. And there's actually nothing you can really do if you have a sample that's baked with a low pass at 10K. You can't create those frequencies short of like distorting the sound, which will change the entire timbre of the sound. So this is like triggering to me on percussion. I think it actually ruins the clarity of your percussion. If you're going to do this, the only place I could say maybe you can get away with it's like maybe like 20. Uh, 20K is like, again, the ceiling of like an MP3 file. But in 2023, there really isn't a reason why you would have to ever low pass your your snare. Um, it's, it's just kind of like a long going myth that you should do this. I don't agree with that at all. Um, Mark says 10K is too low, but any merit to low cutting higher frequencies as a conscious decision to allow space for other instruments high end. Yeah, so you can actually, what, what, what I think is the, the solution to this is actually not a full low pass or a full high pass up here. I would say just reduce instead of completely eliminating. Like if you feel that the snare is too bright relative to another lead or something, the, op the, the best option is just to reduce the high end by maybe a few decibels. It's never to like completely try to eliminate it because when you eliminate frequencies, you're just ruining the integrity of the original sound. And that's just ruining, you know, it, it, it completely undoes your choices of selecting that sound for its timbre because the timbre of a sound is defined by harmonics. By, by the harmonics of the of the sound like every sound in the universe is just a fundamental with a different harmonic series over it and if you start to remove all those harmonics you're just like diminishing the reason why you chose that sample in the first place because you're changing the fundamental timbre of the sound 
So rather than trying to cut stuff, I always just try to, you know, if I'm, if I'm EQing for balance, I just try to slightly reduce, slightly boost. Uh, you never want to like have a bass sound with like a high pass on it. That's cutting off the fundamental of the bass because it's just going to ruin the integrity of the timbre. So that's my rant on that. <laughs> See how much brighter that sounds just by removing that low, pa low, low pass? Like, look at this. That has that inherent, like, like flash game sound, right? And you pull that off and it's like, oh, there's the high end. There's like the clarity that I was looking for. It's like, like having a little bit of water in your ears. Uh, if you really want a great example of this, it's like if I was to throw an EQ on the master and I just did a 10K low pass, you'll hear that it sounds like a flash game. So don't do that. <laughs> just try just try to um, try to try to make space by subtly reducing or boosting but don't like fully cut it's just going to ruin your sonics um and you never want to be in that you know lo-fi territory unless that's the this the sound you're going for uh which is a stylistic choice but i have a feeling based on the track direction that this was not supposed to go that way although it is kind of a vibe when it sounds like uh you know 2002 flash game So additionally on the snare, I think I'm just going to roll off a little bit of the low mid. I don't think it needs all of that. It's kind of weighing it down. Maybe not that much. Let's pull this high pass down a little bit. Give it the fundamental of the snare back. Now that we've cut and, and rebalanced the snare, we can give it a little bit more volume to compensate. So let's give it like two decibels. See how much clearer that sounds? And then now that we've opened up that high end, we can do things like add reverb and stuff that will, you know, tonally give it space but won't distract because it's it's not dull anymore. So we can throw on like you know, 15% reverb or something at a, a second long or two seconds long. And you can get away with that without it being like completely destructive and, and make the sound sound like it's in a tunnel. You can probably even give it some more time, like four seconds. Hey Andreas, um, it's a great question. If you want to submit a project file, um, you're going to want to, excuse me, you're going to want to freeze everything. Uh, this is only for patrons of the channel. Um, you go to patreon.com slash Julian Gray and you can submit. There's also going to be a Patreon meetup after this where you can submit and we're all going to talk about each other's songs, listening through uh, submissions this afternoon. Um, so if you want to get double the bang for your buck, if you're a new uh, subscriber on Patreon, uh, both of those events are happening today. But yeah, I uh, th these submissions are only for patrons just to keep the submissions to a you know a manageable number. Um, if you want to submit something, um, go ahead and uh, go over to patreoncom slash Julian Gray, and and what you're going to want to do is just freeze any obscure third-party plugins and um, yeah, just send me the project file folder. All right. Do you mind soloing both the original and the one you've now changed so you can see the drastic difference? Yeah, sure. So I'm going to undo what I just did. I'll pull this back to negative 6.5 and I'll remove the reverb. I will put this back here. I will high pass it a little bit more and then I will give it a 10 K roll off. And this is the difference. So here's the snare I have. And 
here's the stare he had. What I can do is just this. Hold on. This is a cool little trick I picked up from Steve Duda. Uh, you just uh, uh, map a key to both of the the the, the um, mute buttons. You undo key, and then if you press the key, it'll toggle the two. So let's check this out. So that's his. That's mine. And I will say that the main culprit of this is the low pass. Like if you actually just ditch the low pass, it's not going to sound that bad. But the subtle shaping does help as well. So yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's really, uh, that's really important when you're, when you're EQing, make sure that you're not playing into the lo-fi thing. Cause unless you're going for that sound, it's going to detract a lot from the sonic fidelity of your whole song. So there's probably a lot of stuff he's done that on. Like this is one I could just pull that off. It's probably going to improve the shaker a lot. Let's see. Yeah. Flash game, baby. Immediately better. Drums are sounding beautiful now. Uh, I was just that snare and and um, and shaker that were just really dull. Uh, you, you never want dullness in your in your top percussion, um, and I think that was the result of the EQ. Jacob says I find instances where my snares will just stick out like a sore thumb in the mix. I try and avoid that in my mixes. Yeah, um, a lot of that can be resonances. So if you have like a snare that has a huge resonance at like 500 hertz or something, like a big <laughs> just pulling that back and giving the high end some some boost so it has the clarity to punch but not like feel like a boxy sore thumb um that that often helps um making sure that the high end is like the priority in the eq so that you end up with like a really sharp transient and not just like a, a really heavy like <sighs> um will help a lot all right so that is the the main things mix wise that this needs to be corrected i think sonically it's sounding really good now and it wasn't that much stuff we just gave the bass some boost we we um adjusted some eq on some things when it, and just some volume changes and it really like brought out the best in the song so the other thing is the vocal. Now this bothered me from the first time I heard it. This is not in key. Or it's not that one. Hold on, is it this one? Let me, let me see if I can find it. Ah, it's that one. This is not in the right key. Um, I would personally look into this note and experiment a bit with the the note placement um, of of the of the actual vocal itself. Let me let me just try this really fast. I'm gonna keep yours in there. Just I'm gonna experiment with what note you're actually playing, and I, I guarantee you we can find a better placement for it. Six is the correct interval. It might sound weird to you right now, I think.
makes me wonder if this would be better here too, but I, I don't hate these as much. To me, that's better. Um, that's just my, that's just my opinion. I have pretty good relative pitch and things that are questionable and in harmony, uh, bother my ear a lot. So it might just be a me thing, but I'm sure anybody else who has that more nuanced ear for harmony would maybe pick that up. Kate, Katie has the same, actually my partner. Um, I'll have to ask them about it. Too. Yeah, to me, that's stronger. I wonder if I could just apply that across the board. Like, oh, these are different. So this is four. Okay, so let's, let's see what happens. I'm not married to this idea, but I'm just trying it out. Oh, that's weird. So there's one note in there that's a different interval. I, maybe this one is better just where it was. That's better where it was. Cool. So it's mostly this sample here and then this one. If you want to try that in your own time, you can give that a go. But I think that this is like um, this. This was a big problem for me that I think just sh shifting it up to semitones helps a lot. Jacob says, mixing is all about designating sound ranges for each sound to limit them all fighting for room. You could have a great idea, but if the quality isn't there, the whole great idea loses its value. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would say, um, in addition to that, though, something that most people don't realize is that the ranges of sonics are directly reflective of musical notes. So if you if you have a, a lull in your balance like you have a big spectrum on your on your master channel and you see a big gap chances are you're actually just missing a note there like missing a note playing that interval on that octave if you just fill that void you'll have a much fuller mix it's the same reason why like you have a bass guitar a regular guitar a lead singer and a drummer in a band they all fulfill a different octave uh, they fill this a different space within the spectrum intentionally that's why it exists. Cool. All right. So that's Full Gas by Wickwire. Great record, man. I, I hope that I helped and uh, walked you through some principles that will make your music better. Um, really looking forward to discussing this with you. I hope you can join in our follow-up Discord meetup after this. Um, but if not, then great work anyway. Everybody in the chat, give them a nice little clap. It's a great record and um, I think we made some major progress on it all right so first song of the day is done and we'll be moving on to our next one let's go ahead and put this in the done folder I can't type full gas done all right next up we'll go to better um, I don't know who submitted this one. If this is your track, go and head and let us know in the comments of this video, whether you're on Twitch or YouTube. And um, yeah, I would, I would love to know. Okay, this is an Ableton Live 11 session. Let's go ahead and see if there's any other live 10 sessions. Sunrise. I have a feeling there will not be. Okay, cool. So we're done with live 10 for the day, unless that other guy who was interested submitted anything last second um if not then it's cool anyway hope to see you next time all right let's go to better and let's pull this up in live 11. uh don't save and we'll get to work on track number two wickwire says i wanted to switch it up and go for a kind of progressive merger with drum and bass yeah i'm i'm really into drum and bass right now i um this is something that I haven't really shared publicly, but I, I, I joined a band and it's going to be something that you'll hear more about in the next probably six months. Um, and the main genre is drum and bass. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Jacob, uh, I do these every month on either the second to last or the last Sunday of the month. And then we do our 
Discord meetup immediately following that every month as well. So we'd love to see you as part of the community. It'd be great to have another person. All right. This is better. I'm not sure who submitted this. Um, I could probably check. I'm going to do that while we speak here. If you guys have any immediate questions for me, let me know. I believe this is, um, let's see, an artist who goes by the name of Daka, D-A-K-A. His name is Danny, and we'll be working on his track now. I don't think we've ever actually worked on this um, or anything from you before. So I'm excited to excited to check this out. All right. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. Let's go ahead and play from the beginning beginning and see how it goes. Andreas, it'd be great to have you as part of the program, man. Um, I think there is a space or two available at the moment. We, I just had uh, an opening come up. So it'd be really cool to have you in. Krazy, I cannot fix FL projects in the same way. Let me just pause this really fast. I can't fix FL projects in the same way. I can do stems, um, but I'm not uh, I'm not proficient enough in FL Studio to really um, do my best work. So you can submit your uh, you know Dropbox demo or whatever if you want me to play it on the stream, or if you want to send me stems, I can do that too. I used to do that for a few artists, including Sonic Buster, who's in the chat right now. Um, I can do that as well, but I can't really work in FL Studio. Andreas, if you want to text me afterwards, I'd, I'd love to connect. Message me on Instagram or something. Cool. All right. Okay, the first thing I'm noticing is a vocal timing issue. Um, Jacob, I can use Pro Tools and Logic, but I prefer not to do that for this sort of thing. Just because it's less efficient for me. Cool idea so far, guys. What was his name again? It was Daka. D-A-K-A. We're going to have to fix the vocal timing here. That's a big issue. Hey, Gold Toast. Welcome to the stream. Good to see you, man. Crazy. That's crazy. I actually was using FL Studio around 2005, 2006, maybe. Just briefly as a kid. Never got too deep into it. I was more of a garage band logic kind of guy. Sounding good, guys. So it's funny, I'm actually a and ring a song for my label, Gradient, with the exact same vocal. I think it's like a splice vocal. It just, it's kind of funny. I, that's kind of why I, I try to avoid long form vocals like that. It's just because it, uh, it's a risk that you might run into the multiple people using the same one.
This is cool. I love this. I need to get this. <laughs> All right, so that's the track. Some really cool ideas here. I think the mix is suffering a little bit and the vocal timing is really killing me just because I'm used to how it sounds like on this other demo I've been ANRing. It's also just kind of loose in the timing. I think if we can address the timing, it's gonna help this a lot. Um, so first thing I wanna do is a similar thing to what we did last time. I'm gonna pull up Span. Let's go ahead and play this again, but mute the drums so we can get a sense of the sonics think that this is drums yeah oh nice they're all in the same place and let's go ahead and play the drop and see if we can ma balance everything out with the sonics uh looking like such oh this is interesting it's got a mid side span going here i just want the regular So I'm seeing a little bit of a lull here from like, you know, this general region here. We might be able to give it a little bit more of a boost right around here from 100 to 500. Um, I'm going to try that on your bass sound. I think maybe a little bit of distortion or something could, could do that for us very nicely. Add some harmonics to this midsection. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bass as it is let's try to add a little bit of saturation i'm the saturation guy let's put that ahead of your ozone let's give it some more harmonics so let's match the volume level so we can actually get a good sense of what this is doing see see how many harmonics it's adding in the in-betweens just gonna give this a little bit more gain i think that's sounding good it's just much fuller now which is sounding nice Let's go ahead and look at the master now. So yeah, there's still this gap between 200 and 1K that I think that we can fix. Let's see if there's any other instruments filling that gap and then maybe we can use one of them to, to fill it. I'm assuming this is, yeah, so this is starting higher. I don't have Soothe 2, but I kind of want to address this EQ because this is exactly what I was talking about in the last song. I think you're EQing for the sake of EQ. And what it's doing is it's actually ruining the integrity of the sound because you're pulling the fundamental off. Let's go ahead and unfreeze this. I know we don't have Soothe, but it should, it should be relatively okay. Yeah, so you have a note playing here at like D, and if you high pass above that note, what you're going to do is you're actually just removing the fundamental, and all you're hearing is the harmonics. You never want to high pass above your lowest fundamental, because otherwise you're going to end up with a really botched sound. Um, every sound in the world is a combination of a sine wave with a series of harmonics on top of it. And the harmonic series is what defines like the tone or timbre of the sound, like we discussed in the previous song. But every so every sound in the universe, from like a cup hitting the table to like a car going past to like a piano to a flute, has the exact same fundamental if you play, um, if you play the same note. So you never want to sacrifice that fundamental. That's what makes the note the note. Um, I can just give you a brief example of that. Like if I was to just take a sine or a saw wave here, let's throw an EQ on it. You can see that 
we have this this fundamental I'm playing an F and uh, let me pull up serum here I'm playing this F note and you can see in the bottom right corner of the EQ if I can show it right here there's an F it's like a 349 F it doesn't matter what shape I use I can make this like a, a square wave that's still an F I can make this a whatever this is still an F and I can you know pick like here's a basic mini let's go to the shapes again and let's select like a triangle still an F <laughs> saw wave is still an F and what's making these sound different is the harmonic series above so like if you look at the when I switch these you can see that the harmonics change per wave shape and every timbre in the entire universe is based on um, some sort of combination of these upper harmonics but what happens is if you actually collapse it and you remove everything except for that low harmonic let's go ahead and do that here you just end up with the same sine wave and that could be a pulse width wave it could be a wider pulse a square a saw a triangle whatever this is the fundamental sound that makes up that wave and this could be like a flute it could be a piano again it could be a cup dropping on the floor um, it's going to resonate at a fundamental frequency and you have to have that in there otherwise the note will not be perceived so if we have like let's say a saw wave at F and we have this harmonic series above it there's this idea that if you just cut the bottom off of something you're removing it right but what you're really doing is you're just hurting the integrity of the sound it's just the same sound you still hear that F at at you know 320 all you're doing is removing what makes the sound an F and you're ending up with all of the harmonic series which is implying this F note fundamental but you're actually just cutting it it's the same note you're just removing what makes it the note so when I see this in tracks it's a huge no-no to me so like you had this this filter here which is here And you're just ruining the integrity of your sound just because you're you're cutting that low harmonic out. So if we if we just reveal that and we, we let that through, and you do that on this one too, you don't need this secondary EQ. See how much better that sounds? <laughs> it just sounds fuller and, and more like an actual sound than just a harmonic series, you know, framework above something that's missing. Yes, I do have a video specifically targeting this issue. It's called Don't Use EQ Like This, and it's fundamental to mixing. So um, I would highly suggest anybody check it out. It's best to move the note placement than it is to actually start ruining the sounds that you're using. Because, again, why would you pick the sound if you're just going to remove the harmonics that make it the same sound that you, you picked? Danny, oh, I just saw you You joined the stream. This is his track, um, and I'm, I'm very pleased to work on it. You can go watch the, the VOD after this comes out, and it'll probably help you um, understand exactly what I'm talking about further. I know you hopped in the middle of this conversation. But, but yeah, so I wanted to remove the, the, the low pass and um, let some of that fundamental through so that you have the fullness of this pad, and it's really going to fill up your song. So let's go play it. Go ahead and play the bass and the pad now together. You had it here. See how it feels constrained, and that just feels full. The difference of the the only difference is the fundamental, and having that fundamental is infinitely valuable. Um, again, there's another one here. I I. I say it once and I always say it again, like don't unnecessarily EQ. It's just going to ruin the integrity of your sound. Try to try to pick the right notes and the right sounds that are inherently compatible. 
Jacob says, also kind of off topic, but I should add that Air and Take Me Back are two of my favorite songs of yours. Super vibey tracks and both vocalists on those tracks mesh super well with your style. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Um, every track I do with 28 millimeter always ends up being magical. He's, we have such compatible writing styles. Uh, those are some of my favorite songs. All right, so back to this. Uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the Sonics now that I've I've reintroduced that low end to the pad. I think this is going to fill out this octave here that we were missing before. Yep, instantly. I think we can even get away with giving this a slight boost at like 300 hertz where we're missing it here. So this is more of a lead sound, I think, right? Let's call this a lead. It's so playful, I think this should be brought out a little bit. Maybe let's give it like three or four decibels. Let's see how this sounds. So balance-wise, this is looking pretty good. This is a little hot. Is that what I just changed? Okay, let's pull that back a little bit. And maybe we'll apply an EQ to this so that it has a little bit less in the low mid. Something like this. And because it's a lead, it can afford to be bright and not super mid-centric. I think it adds a lot. Yep, now let's play that in the mix now. Peaks are gone. The vocals, what's doing that now? Okay, that's sounding pretty good. I think that we can maybe even afford to bring back some more brightness to this. I know you have some stuff on, stuff on it. I don't have wider or soothe too, but maybe we can give this a shot just without it. And um, if it's terrible, you can always revert. And again, I don't like to fully low pass. I think maybe like just a small subtle roll off would be more appropriate here. So the vocal does feel out of time to me still. I might just be married to the previous idea. I'm gonna try a little bit of timing on that. I don't wanna like harp on it too much because you might be just really attached to how it is currently. But um, I wanna try something for you. Um, let's bring the drums back really fast to see how that balances in. And then um, we'll place those quickly with gain. And then I'll try the vocal thing. Let me mute the vocal for the time being. So I can focus on the instrumental. So same thing as before. Don't unnecessarily low pass your drums. It doesn't help anything and it makes it sound worse. Um, I don't think this is needed either. What you're searching for in EQ is probably just gain. Um, let's go ahead and look at your master. Um, I noticed you have a lot of plugins on it. Let's go ahead and just pull up Pro L. I like Pro L because it allows you to see allows you to see um, see the the volume of everything over time a little bit better than Ozone. So let's take a look at how this kick is looking on a master level. I'm gonna solo the kick. So the kick is hitting here at like negative seven. If we play everything, there's quite a bit of stuff that's much louder than the kick, which is not right for dance music. You always want your kick to be like the highest thing. And this is like a really logical way of, of, of uh, mixing. Like if you see this, 
and your kick is peaking out at like negative seven, chances are you just need to turn up your kick. So I'm gonna give your kick like five decibels, maybe like negative nine. That's gonna make a huge difference in this mix, I can already tell you. Um, let's go ahead and play that. That's already better. Something I'm not quite loving about this kick sample, but um, for the sake of time, I'm gonna keep it in there. I actually wanna give this kick a little bit of a boost rather than a compression. I, I don't think it really needs this pro Q. Uh, maybe it does actually. <laughs> Pull some mids out and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a high shelf. I think it would be really good for this. Something like this. Give it some teeth to cut. And with the high shelf, I can probably pull this back a decibel or two, like negative uh, 11. Yeah. We're still hitting around the same. Maybe meet me in the middle, negative 10. Okay, cool. Now it's our loudest thing. Let's go ahead and check out the bass and kick relationship. So the side chain really needs to be tightened up a bit. I'm gonna pull this down a little bit and we're only gonna listen for the click of the kick, which is like 2.5K. I don't want it to hear the entire kick and cut for the entire length of the kick. It would just completely ruin the bass of, at this much cut. But, you know, if we're just listening for the click, we can get it away with really cutting the bass and giving it a little bit more release. So much tighter. Cool, sounding good. On this clap, I'm gonna give it a little bit of high shelf. I don't know if the Pro Q is uh, hindering or making that better. <laughs> Okay, yeah, doesn't need that for sure. So this is actually a, a circumstance of what I was referring to. It's a sample that has that baked in low pass. I don't love that, but um, nothing we can do about it. I'm just gonna give it some high shelf, maybe that'll help. And that hat feels awfully loud relative to everything else now, so I'm gonna pull this back a few decibels in the sampler. Clap is extremely quiet. What's this guy, shaker? Okay, same deal, don't low pass. I'd actually say even give it a boost. Yep. Hey, the hat needs to be a little bit louder than that. Yeah. Kick still feels like quiet to me. Maybe I can pull that up a decibel or two. And I can mix this for hours, but I don't want to sit on it for too long, but I'm just trying to get it across the line where I think it's uh, sounding a lot better. That's better for sure. So I think we're now with all the, the drums in this place where the bass could come up again. I'm just gonna give it a decibel or two of gain. I'll do that on a new gain utility just because. And the side chain's really helping with that too. It's cutting it very close to the kick, so it's feeling good. All right, and then I'll take a quick pass of the vocal. I think this is gonna help the song a lot. Um, it looks like you only use a little bit of it. 
Um, do you know the original tempo of this vocal? I think it says it in the file. Unfortunately, I can't use your processing, but what I can do is just. This love is Ill. I wish that it was different. I'll work off of the one we do have. So this says 125. What I'm going to do is this. This is a nice little pro tip for you. Go ahead and save it. Uh, better replace and what I'll do this is if you guys are always wondering how how to like place vocals in time from splice or a remix comp or whatever this is the best way to do it first thing at first I'm just gonna completely flatten out this audio to like the normal version I'm gonna disable warp we're gonna set the tempo to the tempo of the vocal so 125 shouldn't mess anything up um, as long as your other stuff is in tempo and then we're going to place this vocal in time based on the tempo of 125 because this is what it says it was recorded at. And then when it's perfectly in time, we then check warp again and then it'll stick. So let's go ahead and do this. this, love, this love is I wish that it was Don't know what it is. That's Don't late, so... Maybe we do this. this love is I wish that it was A little early. This love is I wish that it was Don't know what Let me see. Hold on. This love is I wish that it I don't know why this is like still warping. Let me see. Yep. This love is Ill. I wish that it was oh, this is probably the printed version. <laughs> Hold on. Let me try this really fast. Sorry if I'm ruining your tracks vocals here, but um Let's try this first. Hold on. Turn off warp. This love is I wish that it was yeah, there it goes. You nudge it. How about now? Can you guys hear me now? It should work now. Not sure why it's acting up, but maybe it's my internet. It's having some buffer size issues. Ah, there we go. We're good now. All right. Cool. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, if you're if you're dealing with splice vocals or you're dealing with a remix pack or something like that, just find the original tempo of the song. You can just Google on Beatport like what um, what the speed of the song is. Drop it in, set your tempo to the same, and then line it up with Command or Control like this until it sounds right. And then you just press Warp. You hit OK. Um, I'll do the same for. I guess you could just copy it across to these ones, and then you just do 130 again.
back to your original tempo and now it should be perfect it's a little work hack that makes it much easier there you go now you're in time I know this song because we're A&Ring a gradient song with the same vocal. <laughs> so yeah, and then I'll leave it to you to copy this across to your other ones if you want to use it or not. But that's, um, that's how you do it. That's how you line up a vocal really easily without having to warp anything. I think it makes it a lot easier. All right, I think that's where I'm going to wrap it on Better. This is a great record. Uh, it's coming together. I made some adjustments. I hope that some of this stuff was helpful. I think that a lot of the stuff that applied to the previous song we worked on applies to this as well. Just the EQ. Don't don't unnecessarily EQ. It's like my biggest pet peeve is like when I see people like who have taught or have learned to EQ everything to like quote unquote make space in a mix, and it's not true. You don't want to ruin the integrity of your sounds just for that. So, yeah, Danny, great work, man. I hope to see you in the after call over on Discord. We're doing a little feedback session, um, discord.gg slash Julian Gray. Uh, little meetup for the patrons as well. should be a lot of fun. That's going to happen at 2 o'clock. That being said, I want to keep this moving so I can have a little bit of a gap <laughs> between this this, and then the <laughs> the call on Patreon or on Discord because I don't want to jump right into it. I want to have a little break. So let's try to spend the last half hour here on this third record, which is Infinikids Sunrise in Nashville. Let's go ahead and pull that up. Love me some Nashville. My air thing went on. Let me turn it off. All right, we're back in business. All right, this is sunrise in nashville by infinikid and let's go ahead and check this out and yeah get this thing going i'm loving these submissions today guys you guys are really killing it um really happy with all of it okay let's go ahead and play oof pretty ah Beautiful writing, man, as usual. I will say, I think you might be able to like adjust the velocities of the notes or something to really maximize the realness of how those instruments sound. I can tell it's contact or whatever you're using. So pretty though. Ghost Pepper Intergalactic. We're gonna pull up our same suspects span. change there is so pretty. Ooh, that's like goosebumps inducing. Beautiful, man. I'm I'm like a musician. Uh, musicians musician, so I really appreciate like really well thought out chords. Musical ideas, like I grew up on this kind of stuff, so speaks to me in a personal way that like techno doesn't. Oops. This isn't mixed like a dance record, and I think that's kind of charming. 
Um, that being said, though, I don't know if I want to shift the tone of it a lot because it feels kind of like more like an acoustic kind of thing, like Enya or, you know. It's so cool. <laughs> it's so pretty. Yeah, the usual suspects, Span and um, Isotope Ozone, or also Ozone, but sometimes uh, Fab Filter. If anybody knows a better plugin for monitoring volume over time that isn't Fab Filter and isn't a paid plugin that does a similar kind of meter to this, I'd love to see that. Because this is infinitely valuable. Like, this is useful. This is useful for spectral balance. This is useful for volume balance. And you kind of need both. Like, from a visual, I can tell that the kick is too loud, for example. I think anybody could. Which is kind of nice. It's like a, it's kind of a vibe that the kick is really carrying. But if you're going for balance, it's a little bit loud. So pretty, dude. Ah, I love this. S Ooh. That's great. It's like one of those, uh, you go to a concert and you think it's going to end and then it kind of ends and then everybody claps and then it keeps going. It kind of happened to me like three times in a row right there. <laughs> really, really pretty, man. I, I love this track. I was going to say it reminds me of Hornsby. Um, little funny story about that. My uncle is a professional engineer, audio engineer, and he engineered the way it is by Hornsby. Um, at least the demo of it. Uh, so <laughs> cool, cool, common DNA there. And, and it reminds me of that. Uh, so special place in my heart. Um, so for this record, I think that it's really beautiful. The, the writing is uh, immaculate. I wouldn't change anything about it. I noticed that you've frozen everything down to audio, so there's not much I can change timbrely. Um, but what I will say is that if you still have access to the original session, or if this isn't just recorded onto like stems or what have you from an analog keyboard or whatever, I would say that maybe you could try doing a little bit of velocity changes using maybe a, a more organic sounding string or, or a piano patch. There's some really good free stuff from Spitfire uh, Labs, which, which might do this trick really well, uh, make it sound a little bit more organic. I think my main qualm with this is that the instruments sound a little bit um, plastic, like they, f they feel a little bit fake. Um, and I think that it's detracting from the overarching organic feeling of the song I think you're going for. You've got this really organic percussion. You've got like analog drums. I think that the the fakeness of the strings and piano is, is kind of taking away from that. Um, Wickwire says in the chat, uh, Spitfire's soft piano is awesome. Yeah, it is so good. Um, one qualm with soft piano is that everybody uses it now. It's like a it's like a known um, it's like a known trick, <laughs> um, but it is really solid. Like I wonder, we have some time here. I'm gonna try to convert this into uh, MIDI and run it through soft piano and see if it if it helps. Um, there's a few plugins that are so good at sounding organic without a ton of work. Like Contact is amazing plugin but it takes a lot of energy to get it to sound real unless you're actually playing and performing the stuff and even so sometimes it sounds fake so i often times find that just the right sample uh instrument like maybe some of the newer contact stuff from like contact seven or um uh spitfire or east west quantum leap or what have you uh any of that stuff is is really solid for sounding real 
And he says in the chat that a few of the instruments are live session players, guitar and strings are MIDI. Um, okay, so I, I guess the piano is maybe the real performance. Maybe it's just performed on a piano with a preset that I did not like. Um, that's okay though. It, it doesn't sound bad. Um, I think my, so my first suggestion would be to change the sound palette. If that's not an option and this was recorded in audio, my other idea was maybe you could try, um, masking some of that with, uh, some reverb, like a really good expensive sounding reverb, like, um, a Valhalla or, a, um, black hole or a lexicon or something like that um yeah guitar and strings are midi yeah i didn't have an issue with the guitar as much as i did with the strings the strings feel a little bit plastic um i'm curious what the reasoning behind freezing everything to audio was if they are midi maybe it was just out of pure necessity of cpu performance but um for me i i always prefer to just freeze in place and then um uh, unfreeze if I need to for that sort of thing but I know for some people it, it, it helps to have the the discipline of like I'm not going to change this again um, which I respect a lot it's kind of like the analog approach all right so we have this MIDI now I'm just going to try this um, it could sound really bad because the MIDI detection might not be perfect but I'm just going to try it because I would be curious to hear how this would sound with like a really good piano Uh, let's do it and we'll pick this is spitfire which if you don't have already spitfire labs is a free plugin that's absolutely like insane at how good the sounds are and they do collaborations with some big artists they do like a uh, free sound bank drop every month it's like a huge library now and they have some really good stuff and spitfire in general is like one of the best sample companies in the world for like sample based instruments so um, if you don't use it already, I highly suggest it. Um, and, and just labs is a great way to get your feet in that door. Let's see if this sounds bad. how jank the MIDI is, um, you can kind of detect how much better the piano tone is. Like, You, you can get the gist. I don't know if you have the MIDI for the performance, but in the future, it could be a cool piano to try. And same for the same for the um, strings as well. Seeing that I can't do that change, though, I'm going to give it a try to just mix around it and maybe try to make it sound a little bit more organic with reverb or time based. So let's go ahead and throw some effects on these things. We don't have to freeze this. There's nothing on it. So I think the main thing is the release time on some stuff is just kind of loose. So maybe a little bit of reverb will help add a little bit of decay. Uh, it, it feels very short in terms of decay time. So let's try this. And I want to high pass a little bit so we don't have like a, a wafting low end. I'm going to give this like four or five seconds of decay and then keep the mix at a, at a minimum. Twenty percent. Hey, uh, you and I. Um, so in our in our Patreon Discord meetup, following this call, we're actually going to be doing a feedback circle, where everybody can submit a project 
or a song, I'm going to play it through the Discord voice chat and then we'll all give feedback. So rather than just me giving feedback, um, it's an opportunity for you to get feedback from many people in the community. And that's going to happen at 2 p.m. It's only it's 1.26 right now. So um, if you want to submit for that, that's that's a lot easier. You can find the information for that on Patreon as well. So just a little bit of reverb, I think, helps bring this into like realness a lot more. I think just because it adds decay and it adds a sense of space, which would th this this instrument would have if it was recorded in a large hall. So that helps a lot. That's that's better. Check our usual suspects here. I'm gonna throw some reverb on the piano as well. Like 30% maybe, 25%. Same settings, more or less. We can try like 80s. And what we can do is maybe try compressing the reverb tail. This is a trick I like to use just to print some of the verb into the signal. Kind of uh, connects the, the reverb into the sound of the, of the instrument it's on rather than just, um, you know, uh, sitting in isolation. Oop, my camera's pretty dark right now. I'm going to up the ISO. Boom. We're back in business. Looks just like earlier. Um, yeah. Let's go ahead and play this. I want to bake in some of that reverb tail. I'm just going to pull the threshold down. Give it a little bit higher of a ratio and, and see what happens. See, it's pulling some of those long, drawn-out reverb nuances into the the main signal. I think it's really elevating those decay times, which is what it needed to sound organic, in my opinion. So the kick is highly dominant in this mix right now. I'm not sure if that's what you were going for, but I don't want to change it too much in the event that that's the vibe you were trying to go for. Um, what I will do is I'm going to EQ your kick group, uh, group a little bit. I'm assuming this is an actual drummer. Uh, maybe it's not. I think we can just pull out some mids maybe. Give it a little bit of brightness on the top. All right, Sonic, uh, it's good to see you. I hope to see you in our meetup call after this. It should be fun. And um, yeah, thanks for joining. Yeah, it's feeling good. Kick is still really loud. <laughs> you can see right there. Let me just see if the... Um, pretty substantial. Let's see if there's another kick. Is this Okay, that's an additional snare. I'm going to throw this up with that. The guitar actually sounds remarkably organic. Um yeah, let's go ahead and turn down this kick a little bit. It's a little hot, I think. Give it a few decibels of reduction. Let's see how that sounds. Maybe not that much. Somewhere around there. Now let's give this a little bit of a bump and gain in terms of uh, master limiter. Sorry if I'm quiet now, but uh, I think that that helped a lot. And then on the guitar itself, I'm going to try a little bit of a high pass. And um, perhaps like a little bit of a shelf so it has a little bit of brightness to it. Yeah, repress.
prioritizing the high end there feels really good to me. Maybe a little bit of reverb on this as well. I, I, I don't want to drown the whole thing, but I think it does help with masking over some of the, the fakeness. Uh, let's go for 80s. I like that. It really does give Hornsby. I love this. Um, so let's see if we can find our bass now. I'm, I'm assuming this is from a different session and then you, you bounce the stems in because it, it does have like summing. Um, if you can go back into the previous session and apply some of these adjustments, I think it'll make a big difference. Um, can't seem to find the bass. Where am I? There it is. And I want to look at the balance on this bass, and then I think we'll call this a wrap on this track. Really, really well written, man. I love the ideas. This is very low centric. I'm going to give it a little bit more mid. Just so it's perceived a little bit better on smaller speaker systems, I don't want to lose that that upper mid perception, where you know you can really understand how this sounds on something like a uh, iPhone. I think you need some side chain on a few things. I'll do that really quick and then we'll call this a wrap. So you have, I think it's drums. Yeah. And we're just gonna listen to the clicks again. The smallest little clicks. Keep the release low. And then we're in business. probably apply this to a few other instruments too like this one feels on od oddly low i think if we can just remove some of this low end it would help Side chain. That's probably high enough where you don't need side chain. It could contribute to a cool groove though. Same for this piano, but I don't know. <laughs> Let's give it a boost in the highs to make it priority and then we'll reduce the lows a little bit make space for that bass. There you go. That sounds great. coming along I think you should probably go back into the individual channels and see if you can make some of those instruments a little bit more organic more organic but I think I did the best we could with what we had to make them feel a little bit more spacious and and real all right so I think that's going to wrap it up for today's fix your project stream everybody give the last artist a nice little round of applause this is a really pretty song I, I love this one such a such a nice vibe has that bruce hornsby feeling as somebody brought up in the chat i immediately saw that as well when i heard it um really pretty keep keep working on it. i'd love to hear it finished um maybe if you're gonna join in our call later today we can 
I'll listen as a group and then give some feedback. I'd love to, to hear what the community has to say about it too. So that's Sunrise in Nashville by Infinikit, I believe. And he is Ghost Pepper Intergalactic in the chat. Cool little name there. That just about wraps it up for this Fix Your Project stream. Make sure to subscribe if you want to catch the next one. We do these once a month on the second to last or last weekend of the month on the Sunday. Um, subject to change, but generally that's when we do it. Uh, we're actually doing a meetup after this over on Discord, discord.gg slash Julian Gray. Any patron, any level is allowed in that call after this. We're going to have a little feedback circle. You can send in your tracks and we'll all check them out as a community. Take turns listening and uh, give it a listen. Andreas, uh, keep up the great work, Julian. Drop a DM on Instagram. Awesome. I'd love to connect after this. And for all of you who are watching this, if you want to join in on the Discord shenanigans, I'll see you guys in 15 minutes or so, maybe 20 minutes, over on Discord. And we'll have our little monthly get-together this month with our first little collective community feedback circle. All right. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it, and I appreciate you tuning in and supporting me over on Patreon month over month. Really looking forward to the call after this. And great work on all of the songs today, as usual. Some really, really good stuff today. And I'm looking forward to next stream. I'm Julian of Julian Gray Media, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.